all four parks. One of the busiest weeks of the whole year. Can I get every Disney World ride photo in one day? I am in Disney World today trying to get every single ride photo done. They are some of the most popular rides in Disney World across all four parks and it is spring break and Easter weekend so Disney World is positively slammed. I think we're in for a doozy of a day. 7 a.m. was intense. That's when you can kind of book everything in Disney World and it was Listen, I'm fast. I do this a lot. And I still didn't get everything I wanted today. It's spring break and it feels like it. Um, and it's Easter weekend, so kind of double double the crowds. I'm in the Magic Kingdom parking lot right now. I'm parked in Peter Pan 210. Please don't let me forget that when I make it back here tonight. Um, we've got an aggressive day of challenge ahead of us, um, especially in crowds like I'm expecting to see. I actually uh, ended up leaving about 20 minutes earlier than I wanted to for my house because when I saw how quickly lightning lanes and things like that were going in the My Disney Experience app, I thought, I need to get to this park so I can rope drop. Uh, as, and I was headed planning on rope dropping anyway, but with high, high crowds, you have to leave even earlier for rope drop. So I just parked, it's 7.30, that's 30 minutes before park opening. And I'm not even really exactly happy with that. Um, I left so early, I didn't get my makeup on. We're gonna play a game called how hard is it to put your makeup on in a Disney World theme park? Which should be fun. Let's see how long it takes me. All right, I'm through security at the Transportation and Ticket Center. It is currently 7.50. The park opens in 10 minutes. I'm okay with that. Although I love the ferry boat and it can often be just as fast. The loading process is a lot slower if you catch it at the wrong time. You could be much, much, much slower than the monorail. But we are going to hop at the monorail to head over to Magic Kingdom and we're gonna use a breed love tip to hopefully get there a little faster um, on the monorail if it works it works if not it, it doesn't but to use this tip you're gonna want to get in the right lane when both lanes of the monorail are open so you're gonna want to just pop in the right lane this is why you do what I just did, you get a monorail car 12 all the way on the right if you can. Um, it's a little tricky because sometimes people will be blocking the way, but if you can make it in that car, you'll be off the monorail before everybody else. Y'all coming down behind me. Um, and that means that there won't be lines when you walk up to the turnstiles because you're the first off the monorail. It's a great tip. Also, I've got my foundation, blush, and mascara on, which is a weird combo, but you know, it's a start. Thank you. Let's ride, baby. All right, so parking 30 minutes early. I'm in the park seven minutes after rope drop, 8.07. So just something to be aware of is that it can take a minute on those busier days to get from the TTC to the park. So if you are parking or commuting from your hotel, just allow some extra time because that transportation can take some time. All right, here's the plan. So when you're in Disney World, there's a couple of things you want to book at 7 a.m. That is virtual queues, lightning lanes, and if you're a resort guest, individual lightning lanes. I did all three this morning. Um, I, even though I was at home, I am connected to a resort hotel reservation right now. So I was able to use that 7 a.m. individual lightning lane purchase today. Um, and I would have been able to do early entry, which honestly, I thought that I was gonna make it at least to a little bit of, but I did not, um, just because of how long it took to get over here. And I'm okay with that because I do think it might have caused a problem for what we're doing now. We're just heading to Tron Light Cycle Run. I joined Tron this morning and I was fast enough that I got the second boarding group, boarding group two, um, which is awesome. It meant that it was called very first thing here in Magic Kingdom, it's already been called. It was called right at 8 a.m. The reason this is so awesome is because even with the virtual queue, Tron Light Cycle Run can have like an hour physical wait. So you'll wait for your virtual queue to get calls and then you'll have an hour physical wait. And I think with boarding group two, heading straight over there when we get in the park, hopefully we won't have a super long wait, which will be really good also because I think we're gonna head into a super long wait right after that for a reason at 7 a.m. Didn't quite do as well as I wanted. Tron Light Cycle Run is a high speed roller coaster attraction, and you head into the grid from the Tron films. 
Uh, it's a short roller coaster, only about a minute long, but super fun and really unique because you are riding on sort of a light cycle, which is a motorcycle type uh, vehicle. The only ways to ride it are by either purchasing an individual lightning lane or by joining a virtual queue. The times to join a virtual queue are 7 a.m. on the dot, 1 p.m. also on the dot, or if there are extended evening hours and you have access to them, 6 p.m. Now, I always recommend going for that 7 a.m. virtual queue drop because then if you don't get it, you can try to get it 1 p.m. But no matter what time you're going for the virtual queue, there are some tips you absolutely have to follow. Make sure that you have a literal timer running or a clock that shows you exactly what time it is, a world clock or the clock on your phone. Be counting the seconds. The seconds. Starting an hour before the virtual queue opens, you can confirm your party. So make sure to do that ahead of the time that you're gonna to wanna to be going for the virtual queue. And then the second it turns to seven, refresh that virtual queue page and hit join virtual queue button on the bottom. This should get you in a pretty good boarding group. I have a favorite Tron locker. It's number 568. I use this one every time for some reason, but it's great because then it's usually open and I never forget where my stuff is. And you have to use your park ticket to get into the lockers, but they are complimentary. Okay, interesting. Seven Doors Mine Train is closed, which was gonna be our next stop. So I think instead, we might go grab Pirates and Haunted Mansion real quick. Space is at a 45 minute wait and it's only going to keep going up, but Pirates and Haunted Mansion will get really busy too when folks are out of their first ride lines of the day. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and hop into those to try to save double the time on double the rides than just saving a little bit of time on Space Mountain. So before seven, I went ahead and purchased Disney Genie Plus for the day. It was as expensive as it gets today. We're doing a ride challenge with many of the most popular rides in Disney World, so I thought that it was worth it. Um, at $39 per person today for all four parks or for Magic Kingdom. The pricing varies uh, based on park. If you're only doing one park, it can be a little cheaper. Usually cheapest to Animal Kingdom. All four parks in Magic Kingdom are typically gonna be priced about the same and gonna be the most expensive. So that $39, whew, very expensive for Genie Plus. That's how you know it's gonna be a busy, busy spring break kind of day. I'm looking at the longest waits in Disney World right now to see which parks look the busiest. And it looks like uh, Magic Kingdom shockingly slow. Looks like Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios are slammed. 130 minute wait for Avatar Flight of Passage already. And 110 minute wait for Slinky Dog Dash already. And I don't even think Hollywood Studios is open. Look who, look who was in line right in front of me. <laughs> Completely different challenge.
Haunted Mansion, we who are not filming a video together, the ride photo on Haunted Mansion is located in the last picture in the portrait hallway. The lighting will be flashing on that last picture is when they're gonna take your picture, so make sure that's when you ready up for the picture. All right, I've convinced Fry to join us on our way to Pirates of the Caribbean um, because P Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is up to 40 and she's in a ride challenge right now. Pirates of the Caribbean, this one, uh, you might not expect it to have a ride photo because it's not like super flashy. Same with Haunted Mansion. Both of them have ride photos and they're actually pretty awesome ride photos. Pirates of the Caribbean does take a picture of your whole boat so there will be a lot of strangers in there unless you're riding it with like 15 people, <laughs> which would be pretty crazy anyway. But um, still a fun picture. Pirates of the Caribbean is a slow moving dark ride that takes you back in time to the golden age of piracy along with Jack Sparrow who was added to the ride after the success of the Pirates of the Caribbean films. But we are going to head the line. It's supposed to 30 minute wait. The line is all the way outside so we'll see how long it is but 30 minutes is not that bad for pirates. It will probably go up to 45 minutes to an hour for most of the day today. Here I be holding the treasure map and the key as well. A quick 15 minute wait, we were off Pirates. Um, very fun ride, of course, as always. Now, to ready up on Pirates, you're gonna wanna get ready when you see the talking skull and the flag that says, does he say Dead Men Tell No Tales? He, I think he says different things. He says different things, but he's a skull and a flag with a little pirate hat right after you pass the shipwreck with the skeleton at the wheel. Get ready to be blinded. This is when you want to ready up, and this one's a doozy because it will blind you. <laughs> the light is so, so bright. I do recommend closing your eyes. I do a lot of the time so I can see in the next scene. See the rest of the ride. Yeah, but uh, if you are okay with being blinded, get ready to pose, ready up. This one, uh, you might have caught on. There will be a secret message in the ride photos at the end of the day. So uh, keep, you know, keep your eyes peeled. Your Space Train or Spin and Space Mountain. Uh, Space Mountain's at a 75 minute wait. Seven Rose Mine Train is down, and Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin is down. So, should I leave and come back here? I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Okay, I exited Magic Kingdom. I'm out at the bus stop now. Bus transportation to Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios start after 10 a.m. It is 9.56, so we're gonna go get Oh, back over there. I walked past it. That's on me. We're gonna go get in uh, the bus line to go to Animal Kingdom, I think. I just did a big scroll of wait times, and it does look like the rides I need to ride in Animal Kingdom still have low weights, um, but Animal Kingdom looks slammed. There's a 205 minute wait for Flight of Passage right now. Navi River Journey has an extremely long wait. As soon as those folks get out of those, they're gonna be headed to other parts of the park including the rides I need to ride, Expedition Everest and Dinosaur. So I'm gonna head there and knock those out, hopefully while most folks are still in those big ticket rides. I do need to be at Epcot at 1.35 or somewhere in the hour after 1.35 to ride Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind because I did buy an individual lightning lane for that so that I didn't have to risk the 1 p.m. virtual queue. Frozen Ever After and Test Track are my rides in Epcot besides Guardians and those are very, very lengthy. So we're gonna go knock out Animal Kingdom so we don't have to head back over there. And then we will come back to magic, I suppose. All right, it was a very quick ride over to Animal Kingdom. 12 minutes from me getting on the bus to me getting off the bus. So not bad at all. Um, I love that the buses were already waiting there right at 10, getting you know, that early park hop in. And I know it seems like maybe the kind of thing that you wouldn't want to do, but if you're staying at a hotel, you may want to go use your early entry to knock out something that you didn't quite get to do on another day before you hop into another park. It's just nice that the buses are prompt. All right, Animal Kingdom. We don't have a ton of rides to do here. It's actually only two and conveniently, they're not one of the two most popular rides in the park. The Avatar attractions do not have ride photos. Uh, we're decided to do Dinosaur and Expedition Everest. So hopefully not too long. I did grab a Joffrey's coffee on the way in because I desperately need it. Let's talk 
a little bit about how to get your photos. Now, you'll notice that I'm not scanning at little spots after the rides. I'm not, there's no like linking to my park ticket that I'm doing. The way to get your ride photos is to either have a Magic Band or Magic Band Plus, which does cost money. You do have to purchase those. Or for free, you can just, with the My Disney Experience app, enable Bluetooth on your phone. And the ride photo will automatically pick you up and get sent to your phone. So it's pretty cool, it's pretty easy. Um, but you do have to enable Bluetooth, make sure you're enabling Bluetooth. The app will tell you to do so. Um, and just do it if you want those ride photos. If those don't show up, we can head to guest services and let them know that we're missing some ride photos and they'll be able to link our ride photos. Now, if you're okay with just seeing your ride photos and not keeping them, then you don't really have to pay for anything because even if you aren't purchasing your ride photos, you can see them in the My Disney Experience app with a watermark. Now, you won't be able to screenshot these or anything like that, the screen will go black. So you do have to pay for them if you want to keep those downloads forever, but you can view them whether you pay for them or not. To view them, you're just gonna go to the little three lines of the menu, scroll down to where it says photo gallery, and you'll be able to scroll through your ride photos. If you do want to download them without that watermark and keep them forever, then there are a couple of different ways to purchase photo pass pictures. If you have an annual pass, there is an add-on that you can buy to have all photo pass pictures included. If you buy Disney Genie Plus for the day, all of your attraction ride photos will be included in that. Now, this will not count photo pass pictures from Disney photographers, but if you're just looking for those ride photos or just don't want to splurge but want some memories, then buying Genie Plus would mean that you would get your ride photos at least, um, all included with Genie Plus, which is pretty cool. The final option is to purchase Memory Maker or Memory Maker One Day. This is a photos package for your trip, is typically on the pricey side. But if you're going for several days or it's a big occasion, like your kiddo's first trip, it can absolutely be worth it. And I've seen a lot of folks say in our comments that Memory Maker is worth it every time for them because of how many amazing photos they get with their family. And it means that no one is stuck being the photographer because Disney has tons of photographers around. So you get lots of very nice family photos. So purchasing Memory Maker for your trip is also an option. All right, we made it to Dinosaur. I love this ride. For a while, this was one of my favorite rides in Disney World, if not my favorite ride in Disney World. It is a thrilling ride back in time to the time of the dinosaurs. It's a, it's a pretty intense ride, pretty scary. It is dark, it is intense. There is a warning sign, make sure to read this. And it's definitely scary for little ones. I have heard many a time um, a kiddo absolutely petrified on this ride because maybe uh, the family didn't quite expect how intense it was gonna be. Let's roll! Posted 25, actual about 20, so not too shabby. And I hope we got a pretty good ride photo out of it. So when you ready up on Dinosaur, let's talk through it. You're gonna wanna ready up the third time you see the Carnotaurus. Basically, start getting ready when you're sitting next to the Carnotaurus that runs alongside the left side of the vehicle. Shortly after that, you're gonna pull up. There's gonna be a Carnotaurus on the right. The vehicle's gonna stop, it's gonna roar. It's gonna be pretty scary. Um, that is where the photo is. I'm actually not sure I got a good clip of this because it is scary and I was posing. And uh, now we've only got one more ride here in Animal Kingdom. So we're headed to Expedition Everest. Ah, the Forbidden Mountain. 
This is Expedition Everest that we're coming up on. This is a very popular, very thrilling ride in Animal Kingdom. This and Rock and Roller Coaster and maybe Tron Light Cycle Ride now are the most roller coastery roller coasters in Disney World. I actually think this one's the most intense and uh, it can be a little much for me sometimes just because I'm uh, <laughs> not, just because I'm getting more sensitive to roller coasters as I get a little older. Um, but the great thing about Everest is that it does have a single rider line, which means we can hop into a single rider line and skip the regular line, which doesn't look, well, actually it does. It looks like it's up at 50 minutes now. Something to note for single rider lines is you don't have to be alone traveling to Disney World to ride them. You can get in with your whole family, just when you get to the ride, you will be separated. So if you're willing and able to be separated though, it can mean a much, much shorter wait. off the ride on these little screens you do not have to scan if you have your Bluetooth set up but you can just to be sure if you would like but yeah Everest ridden again a little, little too intense for me nowadays but an absolute blast if you're a coaster lover the photo where to ready up is gonna be right when you're come you're gonna hit the end of the track you're gonna go backwards through the caves and you're gonna stop when you see that the light at the end of the tunnel is coming that's when you want to ready up. It's right at the top of that hill that you are going to take your picture, you're going to pose, your camera is going to be on your left. Um, but it's kind of fun to just be facing straight on this one, I think. Uh, and it's kind of hard to look left because you're going down really fast. But camera's on the left, take your picture, ready up, and that's Everest. And that's all our ride photos for Animal Kingdom. So now we got to figure out where we want to go. Probably Epcot um, so that we can be there uh, around the time for our Guardians of the Galaxy individual lighting lane. All right, everyone say bye, Animal Kingdom. We are headed to Epcot now. Um, probably to stand in a very long line, but that's okay, I'm getting hungry. And one thing I do is I will eat my lunch in lines. So we're gonna grab something that's hopefully semi uh, easy to hold and then uh, hop in line probably for Frozen Ever After. I was able to grab a Space Mountain Lightning Lane for 5 p.m. So we will pick that up when we hop back over to Magic Kingdom. I'm really bummed about the fact that my uh, Lightning Lane for Slinky Dog Dash is all the way out at 8.20 at Hollywood Studios because it obviously would be ideal for me to go back to Magic Kingdom last, but it is what it is. As you may have gathered, the only way to get to and from Animal Kingdom is via bus transportation. So we are headed back to a bus directly to Epcot. All right, we're off the bus for Epcot, third park of the day. I think we're definitely headed to Frozen. We'll knock out Frozen and go straight to Guardians after. Um, probably grab some lunch on the way into Frozen Ever After because I do think it's gonna be an hour, more than an hour wait. Lightning lanes are completely gone for Frozen Ever After. They have been for over an hour. Same is true for Tower of Terror, which when I looked was at a 140 minute wait and is on our list later. Spring break is no joke, folks. Oh my gosh, I never checked if Seven Doors Mine Train came back up. Ooh, that could be bad if we missed the individual lightning lane for it. All right, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is Seven Doors Mine Train did not come up. We did not miss the lightning lane. The bad news, Seven Doors Mine Train hasn't come up at all today. So, uh, should be interesting to see if we get that one. With all All Ears Ride Challenges, we have a house rule that if a ride doesn't come up all day, it does not count against your success. Uh, because there's no way you could have ridden it. If it comes up even once, it counts. So worst case scenario is that it comes up while I'm in Epcot and goes back down by the time I get back over there. So just cross your fingers that doesn't happen. Hopefully we catch it today. It's my favorite festival of the whole year right now in Epcot. 
I've acquired part one of lunch. This is from the Citrus Blossom booth. Uh, I love these, tempura shrimp, one of my favorite festival items of the whole year. They are so, so good. They've got this orange soy glaze on them. And I'm gonna eat these and then get part two of lunch and then get in line. All right, and my tamal de rajas, which looks delicious and it's like loaded with poblanos, which are like my favorite peppers. So, pretty jazzed about it. Um, but headed to Norway to get in line. I think between this and the shrimp, should be a good, maybe maybe first of two lunches, but you know, it's Disney. Eat as many lunches as you want. All right, folks, let's settle in for a, let's say 115 minutes now. Ooh, baby. Does that even work with our guardians? Okay, update, it's been about an hour. I think maybe a little more, but I think about an hour. down so there's currently a delay happening they just closed the ride so we're about to leave the line all right they've directed us directly to the exit hallway we did it in a really long line just to exit all right back out in the sun i was in line for an hour and 15 minutes for it to be closed so uh, that kind of thing can be a really big bummer they are uh, a lot of folks getting dumped out of the queue right now. It's very, very busy. Now, sometimes when you get evacuated from a ride or from a ride queue, you will see cast members outside with tablets. They'll scan your ticket media and they will give you a lightning lane to return to the ride. Now, they just had to dump a lot of people out of the queue and I did not see anybody out doing that. So we'll see what happens with Frozen Ever After. One thing that you can do, if that kind of thing happens to you, is you can go talk to uh, guest experience cast members. Now, guest experience cast members are there to improve your experience the best they can. They will not always be able to help with situations like this. It's unfortunate that the ride closed due to technical difficulties and they had to empty literally hundreds of people out of the queue. Unfortunately, I think that if they gave all of those people lightning lanes for later, it would totally muck up the situation with the ride. However, uh, that doesn't mean that Disney wants that to ruin your day, so go speak to Guest Experience. Let them know your situation. I think for me, because we do need to get on Frozen Ever After and back to two other parks, I will go speak to Guest Experience and just see if there's anything that can be done. The good news is I was getting a little antsy about us making it to our Guardians of the Galaxy individual lightning lane, and now we definitely have time to, so we're gonna do that. Things can go wrong in Disney World, which really sucks because it's supposed to be the most magical place on Earth, but everything can be fixed with magic, and my recommendation when things go wrong is to stay positive. I know that that can be difficult, especially when you've spent thousands of dollars to be here and your one must-do is Frozen Ever After, and maybe you just missed out on other opportunities because you were standing in an hour and 15 minute line. That really sucks, and it can make for a big bummer on your day, but my biggest piece of advice is don't ruin your own trip for yourself. Definitely, you have every right to be upset if a ride goes down like that, but try to turn it around. Try to enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your trip, because one little thing going wrong can be a big bummer in the moment, but please don't let it ruin your whole vacation. Speaking of broken down, I did check. Seven Doors Mine Train, still broken. So, definitely a wonky day here. With Frozen Clothes, Test Track has a standby of 105 minutes. Um, that said, there is a single rider line, which I will be using. However, I don't want to chance it taking too long and miss my Guardians of the Galaxy individual lightning lane. So, I'm cruising that way. I'm also going to check on Seven Doors Mine Train again because my biggest fear is that that thing is going to come up and offer individual lightning lanes and I'm going to miss it. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. This thing, amazing ride. Probably my favorite, just like objectively, my favorite ride uh, in Disney World right now. It is an absolute blast. It's a roller coaster that is an omni coaster, so it rotates um, all the way around while you're on it. The only way to ride this one, like Tron, virtual queue or individual lightning lane. Now, we went with the individual lightning lane option this morning. You can either book them and pay for them when the park opens, or if you are a resort guest, you can book them at 7 a.m. Now, unlike Tron, 
The virtual queue won't have a super, super long wait most of the time. In fact, it's super short right now. I would say that the virtual queue right now, if you got called back, probably has about a 20 minute wait, if not less. We have a lightning lane, so we're skipping that wait. But the benefit of the lightning lane on Guardians isn't just that you skip that physical line, it's also that you don't have to worry about the virtual queue. Go to Code Red, command the fleet, and call the Guardians. Guardians check. And we got September, which I'm actually really happy about. September is my second favorite, and I've gotten my favorite, which is Everybody Wants to Rule the World, two times in a row. So, pretty jazzed that I got September. I'm on a hot streak right now with the song. I'm headed towards the test track single rider. I am gonna figure out what's going on with Frozen um, and check Seven Dwarves. We'll see. Sometimes you can, you know, readying up can be a failure. I got so excited that I it was September that I did not ready up. Now I notoriously can't see my face in Guardians photos because my hair gets in it. I put my hair back this time, so I kind of readied up. But to ready up, when you do the backward launch. Uh, when you think you're going back and the music starts you want to ready up then because as soon as the car turns you'll, the picture will be taken it's really hard to pose for this one because you are in a turn um, and I'm not sure I pulled that off but hopefully you can still read my secret message all right made it to test track I got scared walking up that it was down just because I'm getting nervous <laughs> because that's happened to me twice but I'm hopping in the single rider line this is a really, really awesome uh, choice for test track. If you're willing and able to split your party up, the single rider line can cut, I mean, literally an hour plus of hassle out of your day. Most of the time, you walk right up to boarding, pretty much. Um, today, the one catch is that you do not get to customize your car with single rider. There is sort of a little mini a design studio situation where you can do it a little bit, um, but you're choosing from pre-selected cars. I always go power. Mm, let's go with the yellow. Wait, no, highest power. 66, 72, 80, 80, going 80. A little bit of a backup here on the single rider line, but what you're seeing is the entire single rider line. And past this group is the actual loading. So much, much shorter than the 105 minute actual wait. Simcoe performance data acquired. as soon as you come out of the building for the fast part. You're gonna go a little bit, you'll see some white cameras on your right, those are your cameras, those are what you're gonna look, wanna look for. That's how you ready up for a photo on test track. All right, couple updates. Frozen is up, 65 minute wait. Now I do need to hop back to Magic Kingdom to catch my lightning lanes over there, so I do think I'm gonna talk to guest experience and see if there's anything that can make it work for me. If not, we might chance it, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but another update, my ride photos were not linking very well today, which is really wild because I am wearing a magic band and my Bluetooth is enabled, so I don't really know what's up, but I was able to come here to the camera center, which is the Disney Photo Pass location for this park, and talk to one of the photographers behind the counter who helped me look through a lot of photos to find my photos. All you need really is the time that you rode the ride. Lucky for me, I'm usually filming on the rides and my footage is timestamped, 
so I know what time uh, I was on everything and we were able to find three of my missing ride photos. I'm still missing a few more, but we're gonna try to get them. Okay, to speak to guest experience, you wanna look for blue umbrellas like that one that say guest experience team. I went and spoke to them just now and in my case, because I did wait and lose so much time in my day and I went and explained nicely that that happened, um, they were able to give me an experience redemption for Frozen Ever After. So I'm able to ride it before I need to hop back to Magic Kingdom, which is very, very nice of them. And what I always say when I talk to them is that if there's nothing they can do, that's totally fine. I just wanted to ask. And I mean that. And one more thing, though I know no one in the All Ears audience would do this, absolutely do not lie to cast members about your situation. They can and will check up on what you've been doing based on where your ticket was scanned, as well as when and what rides went down. So just never lie. All right, we are back at Frozen Ever After, for real this time. And uh, looks like the posted wait is up to 1.15, that was fast. So we are headed to the Lightning Lane because we did wait that 75 minutes earlier, so we did our waiting. Here's one to ready up. You want to ready up, you'll see Marshmallow, the big giant snowman guy laying down. He will say something like, let it go, or I'm free. He'll say something, and then he'll open his mouth. Most of the time mist comes out, sometimes it's not working. And then you will go down a hill. You want to ready up when you're about to go down the hill, because the camera takes, as you're going down the hill, um, it takes from the left side of the boat, so be prepared to kind of angle a little that way, but it's mostly straight on, um, and that's how you'll get a successful picture on Frozen. And that's Epcot complete. So, um, unfortunately, though it would make a lot more sense to go to Hollywood Studios because we haven't been there already, and it is just a quick Skyliner right away, we are instead going to go to Magic Kingdom because Magic Kingdom is where our next lightning lanes are. So get this, right after I rode Guardians, I looked and it was down, and I'm pretty sure but I just heard them announce the test track is down. Yeah, it's down. Holy moly, we are playing with fire today. Jumping in the monorail like we could have taken earlier. We're gonna cruise on over to Magic Kingdom. It's up 4.30 right now. I'll take until it's busy. We have not done very much. I mean, we've done a ton. We were doing great, but wowza, it's a busy day. We got two parks down. Most of Magic Kingdom down. We've got two and a half parts down, so we're over halfway done. Oh, oh wow, do you hear that? The monorail's down. This is wild. Both monorails are down. Resort and Magic Kingdom. The only way to get to Magic Kingdom is the ferry boat. Only way to get to the resorts is via bus, or if you walk to Polynesian, or I guess go to Magic and then walk to the other two. Absolutely wild. It's been a long time since I've seen this many rides with extended downtime where they've cleared the queues. Rides go down all the time, but clearing queues, I'm seeing it so much today. And the models, both models are down. I've never seen that. So we're getting on this ferry, the Richard F.R. ride, and we're gonna head back over to Magic Kingdom. I'm not complaining, I did get another coffee. So I love a ferry boat ride with some coffee. And we've got a little time to spare before our, our lightning lanes. And even if we didn't, Space Mountain is down. So, you know, we're just living life. But we are headed to our first lightning lane, which is at Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Um, and then hopefully Space Mountain comes up. And everyone just start crossing your fingers now. The Tower of Terror does not go down because I haven't seen it go down today. But with, with the luck that we're having, I think that we should, we should start crossing our fingers. I've got my coffee, so hopefully that'll help. It also could kick off a gremlin hour. And for that, I apologize in advance. If I get weird, you can't judge me. 
And you also have to support me through the trying time that I'm, that I'm having if I get weird. Because it's, it's weird for me too. I'll be honest. It's right here at Star Command Headquarters. This is Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. It is a shooter attraction. Uh, relatively difficult. I rode this with kaleidoscope goggles on as a part of Cutthroat Disney, uh, a new competition we just did. It was real, it was, I mean, it was really something. You can see that on the channel now, see how well I did. But we're gonna hop in line. Usually the lightning lane's a bit backed up for this one, but still much, much shorter than that 55 minute post would be. great let's talk about when to ready up on buzz you're gonna ready up when you are going out of the part where you're in the space tunnel that's super like there's space all around you and it feels like you're moving slower than you are the space tunnel is gonna end and then you're gonna go out into a room that has zerg and his big orange robot this is the second time you see him he's blasting off in this one and your cart is gonna rotate a little bit and it's gonna stick there when that happens that's when you want to ready up get your pose ready the photo is gonna be directly in front of you this is a very photo because a lot of times you look very competitive. We got our ride photo. I'm strolling over here to check out Space Mountain. I'm not optimistic. Um, and I was going to do dinner in line for Tower of Terror at Hollywood Studios, but I feel like we might do it now just because it'll be a real bummer if I'm over at Hollywood Studios and Space Mountain comes back up or Seven North Mine Train comes up. So I want to give them a little more time to potentially become available again. One of our wonderful reporters, Miranda, who you may know because she participated in our trader game, was keeping tabs on me as I was messaging everybody in our group text that the whole company's in. And uh, she was like, go, go, it's open, it's open. Um, so look, people are flooding in. I could probably get on with a very short wait right now. They're putting up a predicted 85 minute wait, but I have that lightning lead, so I'm gonna go ahead and head right in. It'll be awesome, because we won't have to wait at all. See, there she is. She lives here in Magic Kingdom, actually. I do. It, there's a tree that's hollowed out, and that's from Miranda Lips. Yeah, it's right back that way. Yeah, it's a good spot. Mm -hmm. All right, we're heading up to Space Mountain. This is a roller coaster that is in the dark. It is very, very dark, almost pitch black, um, with some fun space music and stuff. It is a blast. However, it's also a bit of a herky-jerky one. It'll beat you up a little bit. I don't love this one for that reason, but it is uh, Emma's favorite. Space Mountain no longer allows handheld items, and I don't have a wearable camera today, so I'm gonna have to describe this to you and use some old footage about where the ride photo is. This one's pretty easy, though. Oh, you guys, we went to space. I was skeptical that that was gonna happen today. Um, well, I guess we've gone to space already, actually, at Guardians. Anyway, when to ready up on Space Mountain. You're gonna ready up pretty early on this ride. Pretty much you taxi forward, you'll find yourself in a long hallway that's making this noise. And then you're gonna go close in the hallway and then you're gonna turn. Now when you pull into this hallway, look at which direction you're turning. If you are in the lightning lane, you will probably be turning right. If you're in the standard queue, you'll probably be turning left. You want to look in the direction that you're turning to face the camera. And that's how you're gonna ready up on Space Mountain. Space mission accomplished. I'm gonna I'm gonna head to Hollywood Studios, I think, but just in case, I'm gonna swing my fantasy land and see what Seven Doors Mine Train looks like. Sometimes a visual can be a little more telling. Um, I, again, do not have high hopes. I said that about space. I really mean it about Seven Doors Mine Train. Down all day? Okay, you know, that that's bad. What's worse is that not once have I seen them offering individual lightning lanes, which to me means there's not high expectations that it will open at all. No activity in the queue for Seven Doors Mine Train. No dice on Seven Doors Mine Train. And sure enough, I heard cast members saying it's possible that it won't open for the rest of the night, which, like I said, kind of expected. So I took my own ride pick, 
and we're going to Hollywood Studios and see if we can finish out this challenge. Remember, if it's closed for the entire park hours, it does not count because I couldn't have ridden it even if I did different things. Now, it would be a bit faster and easier for me to bust over to Hollywood Studios from here, but I don't want to be at Hollywood Studios and be done. Seven Rose Mine Train is still not open and have to come back to Magic Kingdom for my car. The burden of driving your car to Disney World when you have Park Hopper. But that's okay, we'll move the car, head on over to Hollywood Studios, and finish out the night strong. When it is super busy, I recommend taking the ferry boat. If you're leaving right after fireworks to ride at Park Close, the ferry boat has a much higher capacity, so you'll find yourself on your way back to the Transportation and Ticket Center a little bit faster, um, or at least it'll feel that way and be about the same. I'm taking the tram because I am hurting my legs. Oh my gosh, okay. Oh. All right, pop quiz, where was I parked? I told you this morning. And don't go back and check. Stop it, stay. Where was I parked? Do you remember, do I remember? The world may never know. I told you, I told you I was gonna get weird. I'm so, I'm so tired and my legs are gonna fall off. They just are. This is the second, uh, I just checked my step count. I'm at 25,800 steps, which is my highest step count of the week, but only by 400. My legs are hurting because I've done this already once this week. I've still got more to go. Here's Mickey 312. And we're by the third pole. That's actually how I keep track of where my car is, is how many telephone poles in I am. Um, Emma and Sage will think I'm crazy for that. My legs currently on autopilot. I think if someone walks in front of me in the path that I'm going in, I will fall over and remain laying there until further notice. Of course, you're gonna love this. The flash is down on Sinky Dog Dash, which means the photo won't work. I'm still gonna ride it, I'm still gonna pose, and I'll still show you where that camera is, uh, but I don't think we'll get a picture out of it, so I'll recreate it, don't worry. Um, I'm like really good at recreating experiences and making them look like they're what's actually happening. You can stay tuned to see if that's true or not, or you can decide whether you believe me or not now. But either way, you should stay tuned. We are now strolling down Hollywood Boulevard towards the Hollywood Tower Hotel, aka Tower of Terror. Very spooky drop ride attraction that is themed to Tower of Terror. Doth my eyes deceive me? Or doth it say 45? If you're keeping track, this ride was up at 130 minutes earlier today. Uh, dropped to 65 for a lot of the afternoon is down out at 45. Tower's a great one to ride later in the evening or first thing in the morning if you're not headed to some of those other e-tickets like Rise of Resistance. In general, Hollywood Studios sees a big drop off around the time Fantasmic starts, which as you can see, is coming up because people head into that theater early uh, to get their seats and it sucks up a lot, a lot of people because Fantasmic rocks. All right, I grabbed my dinner. It's gonna be this uh, waffle bowl from Fairfax Fair. I just had this the other day. I think it's awesome. It's like a great serving size. Uh, buffalo chicken, mashed potatoes, some scallions, some slaw. It's tasty. Um, I'm ready to hop in line, 45 minute line for Tower of Terror. A dimension of sound. drop sequence it was so much fun there were like a bunch of big drops and I got a lot of like air in my seat and there was a fake out which is when it starts playing a little video at the end and then it shoots you back up it was awesome Tower of Terror at night elite I haven't done that in a while now while we're on our way to our probably last stop 
Let's talk a little bit about how to ready up on Tower of Terror. You are gonna ready up when you find yourself in front of the windows. So when you're in front of the windows, they will open up day or night, you'll see a window. And it's a really big window. At night, the lights will turn on, which will help you a little bit more too. And that is gonna be when you wanna pose. So when you start to see that window come into view, go ahead and get your pose ready. I was posed really early because I didn't want to miss my secret message, you know? Um, but yeah, we're heading on a Slinky Dog Dash. I'm gonna check if Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is open over in Magic Kingdom. Would you guys be shocked if I said it was so close? A beautiful nighttime Toy Story Land awaits us. I'm also really jazzed about doing Slinky Dog Dash at night. Another one I haven't done in a while. Another one that's pretty spectacular at night. You can tell, because look at all those Christmas lights. That's like 200 something Christmas lights. Or more. You wanna know how I know? It's because I counted all of them. When I was playing a scavenger hunting in Sage. It's on the channel right now. If <laughs> you really wanna know exactly how many Christmas lights are in the sky in Hollywood Studios. That way all my hard work doesn't go to waste. We made it to Slinky Dog Dash. It is 8.45. Jeez, this took a long time. Um, if you might remember, I booked this lightning lane at 7 a.m. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she laughed. Um, so it's been a long day to get here. Seven Doors Mind Chain is still closed by house rules. That means that once we get, or don't get our picture on Slinky because the flash is broken, uh, we will have completed the challenge doing just 12 of the 13 rides because Seven Doors Mind Train was closed all day. So let's finish strong, friends. Bring, I want you to bring your best photo faces. Oh my goodness, I want you to, I want you to put your best photo face on right now, however you're watching this video, and I want you to, I want you to, I want you to send it to me in your bones, in the past, and I'm gonna feel it. This is gonna be the most epic photo that no one will ever see because the flash is broken. The park closes in about 40 minutes, and this ride is still at 75 minutes, and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run is at 125 minute wait. Spring break, Easter weekend, wild. I got the ride photo, the flash went off. So either the photos are showing up black for another reason or we're gonna get our picture and you'll be able to decipher the secret message. So shout in the comments if you figure out the secret message. That was really, really hard, shockingly hard for only 13 rides. Um, I also want to mention we did not do Rock and Roller Coaster. That one does have a ride picture, but it is closed right now. I would have had time to go get in line for it though. We also didn't do Seven Doors Mine Train, of course. I would have had an individual lightning lane for that one. I think it would have been popular with both of those. If you want to see this challenge again when Rock and Roller Coaster is back open and hopefully Seven Dwarves is too, then let me know. I don't recommend trying to do all these in one day. If you do, I super don't recommend trying to do it during spring break on a holiday weekend. But you know what? It's possible. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And now go watch Fry try to ride every single Disney World ride in one day. We'll see you there.